he's packing a punch, it's Harry Enfield. She's packed a lunch, it's Claudia Winkleman. And their team captain, David Mitchell. And facing them tonight, she's practically royalty, it's Tara Palmer Tomkinson. He's got a Neto loyalty card, it's Dave Spikey. And their team captain, Lee Mack. But now, risk bursting your head with screams of excitement for your host, Angus Deaton. Good evening and welcome to What I Lie to You, the show where cheating and lying is not only allowed but actively encouraged. Lying is part of everyday life for most people nowadays, as I was saying to George Clooney only last night in the bar. <laughs> Many women lie about their age. For example, Jerry Halliwell claims she's only 40. <laughs> Pinocchio, of course, was a compulsive liar who suffered from woodworm, sort of child's version of Heather Mills, if you like. <laughs> Which brings us inexorably to round one, Home Truths, in which our panellists read out a statement about themselves from a card laying before them. At this moment in the passage of time, they've no idea whether they'll be reading a genuine truth or a hideous lie made up earlier today by a crack team of YTS trainees. <laughs> the uh, opposing team then use any means at their disposal, with the exception of blackmail and light sexual favours, to determine whether or not they're being lied to. Tara is first to surprise us all tonight, your home truth, if you would. My home truth is that... I have eaten a diamond. <laughs> Why? I didn't mean to. I was at a restaurant in Paris and a guy put it in my pudding and he was so rat assed by pudding he forgot to tell me and I ate the whole thing. Was this in a restaurant? Yes, it was in a restaurant and in Paris. he put it in your pudding? Yeah. But by the time you got to pudding, he was too rat assed to remember. <laughs> in restaurants, they don't prepare pudding at the beginning of the meal and allow you to have a look at it and pop a diamond in it oh, so that later genius. on... None of this adds up. I'm sitting next to Quincy. He went... <laughs> <laughs> he said to the people before, look, I want to surprise her, so can you put this diamond in her pudding? So he gave them the and diamond And then in we advance. had a row, and he got rat ass, and then I ate the diamond. End of. Right. <laughs> At what point did he remember that he'd put this diamond in your pudding? Was it just after you'd eaten no, it? No, it wasn't just after. It was on the way back to, while well, we were walking along the Seine. <laughs> Still arguing. Well, and then he went, oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Could he have been lying yeah. in the same way that No, I... because I then went through Heathrow Airport and it went bring, 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 take off everything. No, no. And everything, and then it was to <laughs> found to be held whoa, 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 in whoa, whoa, my pocket. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> They're called metal detectors, not diamond detectors. <laughs> David, what, uh, what are you veering? Well, there are a lot of holes in the story, but then, you know, <laughs> maybe Tara's just told it in a flaky way. Ah! Oh, <laughs> you see, double bluff. I think it's true. Why? Well, I know. Look, I, I about... heard you out there laughing at me. However, <laughs> I think, sure, there were areas where it didn't make sense. The metal detector, let it go. The bottom line is, <laughs> I bet you it's true. Yeah, but. I think it's the crafty kind of thing the researchers would have thought, what's the kind of stupid, tough thing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go, it's a lie. He's saying it's a lie. I'm He's overruling Claudia. Tara, fact or fantasy? It's true. Oh, it Sorry. is absolutely true. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Tara has eaten a diamond uh, when it was left in her dessert. Hard to know what's more surprising. Tara not noticing she'd eaten a diamond or that she once ate a whole pudding. <laughs> not known what happened to the diamond, but if you're in a Paris sewer and see a rat driving a Ferrari, you'll know who found it. <laughs> uh, Harry, your home truth, if you would. I can identify any breed of dog just by hearing it growl. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been able to do this? Um... Oh, yeah, right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> This is how you put them off the scent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've been able to do it for five years. <laughs> how did you learn, then? I went and I visited <laughs> lots of dogs. Yeah. 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 <laughs> First of all, I listened to them bark, and then I looked away. <laughs> And then I heard the mark, and then I learnt that part. OK. OK. Do a demonstration of a rock filer. Woof. 
he can't imitate dogs. He just can recognize the growls. Okay, what's this one? Woo 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 woo. <laughs> it's a rock viola. Oh, it's a Saint Bernard. No. Okay, can not. you distinguish between like golden Labradors and black Labradors? Yes. Really? What's the oh. difference between a golden one and a black one? You're such a liar. Well, they some go woof and the other do a slightly different woof. <laughs> So you can do all, basically, every single breed of dog. Can you do yeah. Could you, for example, too? just not even bother with the growls? Could you name ten types of dog for us? Yes. Please. Go on, name no. them. Well, name. that would be a yeah. good time, yes. Golden Labrador. Yes. Black Labrador. Chocolate <laughs> Labrador. Lee. Uh, Hang on, I want to see if he runs out of colours. Uh, <laughs> with pitch. <laughs> Greyhound. Sorry, sorry, what are you going for? I think he's lying. I think, I think we'll have to say that's not true. You're saying it's a lie. lie. True or lie? Lie. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's not actually true. Uh, Harry cannot tell what breed a dog it is by uh, hearing its growl, although some people do have a similar skill, of course, being able to tell what breed a dog is just by smelling the kebab. <laughs> Our next round is called Ring of Truth and utilises the groundbreaking notion of rewarding correct answers with points. Uh, celebrity facts are what it's all about, but are they facts or fiction? Uh, clouds were once removed from the sky so that Paul McCartney could perform Good Day Sunshine at a concert. Sorry, what do you mean? Well, you can move clouds if you really want. You, what you do is, you can either fly a plane over it and drop silver, yeah. silver oxide on it, or you can shoot a rocket into the cloud. You can basically steal other people's rain if you do that. The clouds going on. Oh, is this a dream? No, you can't. <laughs> right. So you're telling me that it's possible to move no, I the clouds? No, think it's true. Yeah, you have to have it's, a lot of it money. It's not like a stupid question, but why would he move the cloud? Well, because good the, day sunshine. Good, good day yeah. sunshine. It can't be good, bold, cloudy day sunshine. Just because the song's called Good Day Sunshine doesn't mean you have to have the cloud move. Yeah, did but he, you're when he sang McCartney. Don't Let Me Down, did he have to tape himself to a lamppost? <laughs> it's like at my 21st, I didn't want is. clouds, so my dad had them removed. What? <laughs> First, it was outside and we didn't have a marquee, so he removed the clouds. Yeah. He no, did, he, did he really? Did he send up planes? You mean, yeah, are two you planes. Not, did, you, did you honestly, at your 21st birthday, get a cloud moved? No, I got more than one. There was... Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the whole sky just over our house in Hampshire was blue. Yeah? Just to match my dress. You spoiled bitch! That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, incredible! <laughs> What a lie. Of oh, course my lie. dad didn't have clouds removed and I never even had a 21st. God, you guys are so gullible. <laughs> <laughs> well, the sun slightly shifted to the right, but not the clouds. Tara, why have you started lying to your own teeth? <laughs> lying, lying is a is a skill that's useful in this game, but you found a way of using it that doesn't help you. <laughs> It's called weather modification, is what they call it. What I don't understand about that is Paul McCartney is doing this concert for money, isn't he? He's, going, he's doing a musical tour for money. Yes. That's his job. People are going to turn up to watch him sing Good Day Sunshine, whatever the weather. Why is it worth his while to spend $40,000 getting rid of the clouds? You could have asked the crowd, look, I've got 25 grand here. We can either get rid of the clouds or it's vodka for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's always sunny when you're pissed. <laughs> <laughs> but to your answer. The fact is, you definitely can do it. The, the question is, did Paul McCartney have it done no, for this honestly, one day? No, honestly, and they were removed at my 21st. I just didn't like you it. You did, really? spoiled bitch, but, so I lied. But, yeah, it was a double bluff. But, yeah, I think Oh, you did have it done, really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, so we can keep it in, because I don't want yeah. to lose that story. I'd like to redress my comments. No, it's true. That's a really good idea. Well done for being so wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> did you really have that done? Yeah, you could do it. You don't need a big old Gulf Stream, just a little plane. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, actually, it's not a thing about being rich. It's slightly to do with being rich. You well, get a plane to move yeah, a cloud, but it doesn't, I'm saying it doesn't have to be a Learjet. I mean, we live on a farm. You yeah, as opposed to these few. council estate Cessna light aircraft, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> do you think some of the problems of drought in Africa have been caused by too many people having 21st birthday parties <laughs> too close to each other? <laughs> So, David, um, what are you thinking? I think it's eminently plausible, unless my team overrules me. Well, I'm, I'm going to remain silent, and if you're wrong, I'm going to really be furious with you. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so no okay. pressure. They're saying it's true. Uh, Lee? Well, uh, well I, I, what do you think, Tara? What are we well, saying? I think it's true. Okay. He mustn't use my plane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's absolute rubbish. Uh, 
Uh, well, I'm going to go with Tara because if she knows about moving weather, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to go with that. Do you want to marry me now? <laughs> say, hand on heart, without a hint of irony, you are, without doubt, the most frightening person I've ever met. <laughs> Alan, I've always been like this. My grandparents were brother and sister. <laughs> That's more extraordinary than any fact we've had on the show so far. Are you saying it's true or untrue? I'll, You're going I'll, for true. I'll go with Crazy Lil and say... <laughs> And say it is. I'll, say, I'll say it's absolutely uh, uh, sniffing well true. OK, and I can uh, tell you that it is absolutely yeah. true. Well done. <laughs> yes. Yes, it's true. Paul McCartney did have clouds removed so he could perform Good Day Sunshine at a concert. Later that same concert, the audience asked to have its ears removed before he performed the Frog Chorus. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, at the end of that round, it's uh, Lee's team who are the cream of the crop, leading as they do, 3-2. Yeah. <laughs> Our next round goes by the strangely decimated title of This Is My. Each of Lee's team will claim to have a close association with our special guest person. Each of David's team will then interrogate, cajole, bully and finally identify the member of Lee's team who is telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest person, Dave. Uh, now Tara, perhaps you'd like to explain how you know Dave. I met Dave in 1990 when I passed out at the top of Mont Blanc because the altitude, the air was so thin, and you very kindly helped me down with the party you were guiding down the peak. So, an heroic mountaineer, thank you. Lee, what's Dave to you? Uh, this is Dave. All right, Dave. He's my, um, <laughs> he's my old boss who taught me how to call bingo. <laughs> So, a bingo calling instructor. And finally, Dave, your relationship with Dave. Uh, this is Dave. He's a, this is Dave. He's a mate of mine from down the pub, Colin Bestie. Um, he makes £40,000 a year on pub trivia machines. So, there you are. A life-saving mountaineer, according to Tara. A bingo tutor, if we believe Lee. Or a quiz machine whiz kid and friend to Dave. Uh, David's team. Your call. Let me ask about Mont Blanc. So, so were you skiing or were you mountain? No, I was actually on a photo shoot that was at the top there, and that's where I passed out because the altitude was so thin. And um, he helped me down. Where's Dave, Dave from? Dave, <laughs> he can't speak. You can't ask. No, I'm asking yeah, you. Yeah. Where's he from? <laughs> He's French. He's French. <laughs> <laughs> where was he? Where was Dave or Dave? No, or Le Dave. Le Dave. <laughs> where was Le Dave, your boss? Uh, Dave, the boss, was, was working in the bingo hall. I want you to talk bingo. I want to give you some numbers. Do it. 86. What? 86. 86, yes, that's in bingo. <laughs> Do a bingo call thing after it. Eight and six. Eighty-six. It's not hard. I've got a system for all of them. Eight. Oh, you mean the little, oh, the little rhymes? The rhymes they do. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah. The Wait. garden gate number eight. Seventy-two. Uh, look at my shoe. Seventy-two. Eight. Eighty-nine. Oh, look. It, the weather's fine. <laughs> To be cloudy, but luckily we got Tara's plane to blow the clouds away. Look at it now, it's very fine. 89. So, <laughs> why is he called Bestie? Bestie. <laughs> He's called Bestie because he lives off bacon, egg, sausage, and tomato. <laughs> oh, he, he doesn't look like a man who lives off bacon, egg, sausage, and tomato. I look At like a man who lives <laughs> off bacon, egg, sausage, and tomato. And you know, even I've been known to have some fruit. So, <laughs> <laughs> six years ago. <laughs> Dave friend Dave makes 40 grand a year, a year. from... What's his favourite subject? Uh, just general knowledge, I think. You think? I think so, yeah. But How, no, I don't I... follow him round. I just, I just happen to know. Where does he I have... think you're telling... Oh, no. 37. Oh, no. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. Come here. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I think you... <laughs> Get yeah, the hang of it. Does he declare his earnings to the revenue and customs? <laughs> <laughs> if not, what's he doing on television? <laughs> 
I know about gambling from the bingo days. You don't pay tax on winnings and gambling. You pay it before you bet. So for every ten pence that's put in the machine, if that was true, which it isn't, because the bingo's true, <laughs> a penny of it would be for tax. I don't think any of them have met him. None of them. Yeah, it turns out right. to be Angus's but nephew. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> It would be an interesting twist. Be. Angus, give us a little off. clue. Uh, well, I can't really, other than saying that it's either Tara's <laughs> mountaineering marvel, uh, Lee's bingo expert, or Dave's trivia king. I think it's Dave's, mate. I, um, I've heard about people making money from fruit machines, but oh. not quiz machines. I think the most likely story is Lee's at the moment. And you don't seem to be considering Tara's at all. <laughs> We don't absolutely know Tara's wrong. There you might... don't absolutely know, but I think if the clue they're... was what she said to Dave. I think you're telling the truth. Yeah. <laughs> that could be me just bluffing. You Not now you've said that. that. <laughs> but Tara could be. could be playing this game on a higher level than any of us. <laughs> Right. I, right. Whatever well, you I, say. I'm going to go. go. I, think on, it's, go. I think it's Lee's bingo calling boss. Dave, special guest Dave, special would you like guest. to tell us exactly who you are? I'm Lee's ex-boss, and I taught him how to be a bingo caller. <laughs> how old are you, Dave? Can I just ask? I'm 45. How old are you? Younger than you. Are you still maintaining that he's not telling the truth? <laughs> <laughs> you, think, you think in a minute, if you interrogate him enough, he's going to break down and go, Oh, I knew I could not keep this up! I, I have been a fool! I have... Many thanks, Dave. Thank you. Many thanks to Dave Howard there, Lee's uh, bingo calling teacher. The main skill of a bingo caller is to keep a smile on your face at all times, even as you're overwhelmed by the stench of lavender and urine. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, a quick glance at the scores tells us that Lee's team, who are starting to flounder hopelessly, struggling as they are, 5-3. And so, to Telly Tales, this week our area of specialist interest is Tomorrow's World, uh, the show that predicted the way all our lives would be in the future, although strangely didn't foresee that we would be living our lives without the television programme Tomorrow's World. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Harry has an intriguing piece of information loosely related to this. The flamboyant Prenderville takes the cue ball and places it for his opponent, the world champion of the year 2000. About to pick up the cue ball. <laughs> Our champion is, in fact, not yet switched on. Well, we appear to... Nothing appears to be happening. Let me introduce, first of all... Oh, wait a minute! <laughs> and the opponent's back at it. He's in for a big break. Takes the cue and the red into the bottom pocket. Flawless piece of broadcasting, a cheap robot, a snooker ball that has to pot, and all on live television. Who'd have thought anything could possibly go wrong? But what's Harry's related fact, Harry? Uh, one episode showcased a toaster connected to the internet that burned a weather forecast into your toast. <laughs> wow! There's <laughs> too much information for my brain to digest. The toaster does... It it dials up the internet and your toast pops out with a cloud, sun or raindrop symbol on it. I mean, it's oh. symbol on the toast, right. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing that, you know, sailors yeah. aren't using it, are yeah. they? <laughs> <laughs> There's a big thing we've got to get right with the weather, otherwise we could all die. Don't worry, check in on the old world service. No. I've got a toast. <laughs> <laughs> Little sun symbol, let's get out there. Never seen again? It's, it's, yes, I mean, not a very detailed weather forecast. Yeah, this sounds like an ITV weather forecast, what I'm hearing. <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> by Palagen. <laughs> <laughs> it was voted uh, one of the 80 most important ideas of 2001. Yeah, I think it's mm -hmm. really good. You think it's true? Yeah, definitely. Tara, you've got a machine that dries you when you come out of the shower. Yeah, yeah I do, actually. How do you know that? The Filipino boy told him. <laughs> it's a what? It's just air. It just cuts like a whole room. It just air well, you. Well, most people have there. air in their bathrooms. <laughs> What, what's the it's very with towels? unhygienic to dry with towels, apparently. Right. How many people die of towel related diseases? <laughs> I mean, this is a level of hygiene that clearly doesn't actually matter. No, let me say. Like when they say there are more germs on your chopping board than are on your Lucy. <laughs> well, if that's so, it clearly doesn't matter, does it? Because <laughs> they don't do it.
anything to you. And I just say before you shoot me, I didn't design my bathroom. Someone else put the air in. <laughs> OK, we're going to push you for an answer. Uh, I'm going to let... Uh, True, Tara, make the decision. True, true. true. Uh, but you are team captain. Your word is final. Yeah. Okay, that's true. Yeah, because he follows. I've got him under my spell. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see if they are remotely it correct. Is a true. Yay! It's a true. Uh, yes, it's true. Uh, Tomorrow's world did feature a taste of the burn. The weather forecast onto your toast and uh, proof, if proof were needed. Let's see what we can expect from the weather. It's a prototype, so I have to help it a little bit. A uh, bit cloudy, that side. But this is the side that matters, and look. Tomorrow, it is going to be cloudy. That... That is shit. <laughs> that is really shit. I imagined how it would be, and I imagined it about ten times better than that. <laughs> Tell you what, it look, doesn't it look more like, uh-oh, looks like there's going to be an atom bomb yeah. dropped on us. <laughs> Again. Oh. No, I think it's brilliant. That could become addictive every morning. Oh, I wonder what that's going to be. Don't open the curtains, let's wait. <laughs> <laughs> and then it comes out. It you makes life I must, fun. I must, you, it doesn't sound like you have to struggle to make things fun. <laughs> That's fun. Ooh, yeah. I can't wait till a vague shape on my toast gives me a <laughs> shit idea of what the weather might be like. And then I'll open the curtains, it'll be different, and that'll be fun. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, it's uh, David's team who are beginning to feel the heat behind as they are 6-5. And so to our final quickfire round, in which our plucky contestants reveal another truth or tell another lie about themselves, depending on uh, what's printed on the back of their as-yet-unseen cards. Lee's team are in the lead, so David's team need to, uh, quite Wait. frankly, get a grip. Starting now, <coughs> Harry. I once pushed a man in a lake for following me, shouting, Only me! <laughs> <laughs> I we, really hope this is true. We, we, <laughs> which lake, Harry? Were you on tour or was it...? It was a lake in Cumbria, but it wasn't w Windermere. So how exactly did you push him? He was in my private area, if Could you know what I mean. I don't... you know. <laughs> I just went... I can't use the language I use, but I did just get... And I did just, the man so get really of... whacked? Yeah, he was in the lake and yelling. What was yeah. he yelling? Only me drowning! <laughs> The poor bloke could have been on the phone, couldn't he? And his wife could have been saying, who are you well, with? It's only me. Story, yeah? actually. Actually, actually, he probably would have sold his story. Anyway, we would know about it if he pushed somebody. Good point, Tara's yeah, making. The man who fell that in the lake would dine out on it, you liar. <laughs> making a decision is probably the best way of progressing. It's a lie. It's a lie. Are you going for lie? Mm. Lie, yeah. Dave? Lie. OK, I'll go with my teams and say that is an absolute okay, he's lie. he's saying it's a lie. Ha-ha. misery. Hi! It is a... Lie. Complete rubbish. <laughs> yeah, it's a lie. Harry has, uh, Harry has never pushed a man in the lake for shouting, only me. It's childish, immature and irritating to repeat Harry's old catchphrases back at him, something which is well known to everybody peeps in it. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <coughs> Dave. <clears throat> I bumped off school to go to London with a boy called Dick Whittington. I was at uh, 16. Was he really called Dick? Well, it was Richard Whittington, obviously. And did you call him Dick? Of course he did. <laughs> obviously See, he did. Yeah. That's where yeah. no one would call their child. If you were Mr. Whittington, would you say, I know. Think you would. I'm going to call my child Richard. <laughs> <laughs> some people do it. I know somebody called James Bond oh, and a oh. guy called Jack Russell. <laughs> yeah, but you're a hooray and they do ridiculous things. <laughs> What did you do in London? Why did you... Well, he just said that his uncle, his uncle knew the Beatles. They were on doing a public, public appearance in Carnaby Street, opening, I don't know what. And if we went down, he could get us a ticket, we'd get in and we'll meet the Beatles and he'll sign his autograph. Was he your best friend at school? No, he wasn't really. He had the chip shop. He always smelt of chips. <laughs> yeah. He just asked, what was the name of the fish and chip shop? Was it yeah. called Whittington? It was called Chippy's Place. Chippy's Place. You know, P-L-A-I-C-E. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe that yeah. a man is sitting here saying that he went with his mate, Dick Whittington, who owned a chip shop to London to see the Beatles, and your question is, <laughs> what was the Chippy called? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to come think? to some kind well, of decision. I, Ask your teammates. Uh, I'm going to abstain. <laughs> 
I will announce in my official capacity as right. captain the decision that Claudia and Harry make. Because right. I'm just, the nerves are getting to me too much. Anyone, of course, I think it's true. I think it's true. I think it's true. I think it's true. Actually, I think it's yeah. true. I think it's true. Yeah. Right. I don't know is the answer. That doesn't help right. you. So I it's think all down to you, Harry. Okay, let's say lie. It's a lie. They're saying it's a lie. It's absolutely nonsense. <laughs> Uh, yes, there you are. It is uh, complete rubbish. Dave did not bunk off school to go to London with the boy called Dick Whittington. Luckily, Dave realised in time that the streets of London weren't actually paved with gold, but with chewing gum and dog shit. <laughs> uh, next. <coughs> Claudia. Oh, hello. Hi, yeah. Hi. I wrote to Jim Will Fix It, asking to meet ABBA. They wrote back, offering the chance to see how the blue bits were made in cheese. <laughs> Did you explain why they did that? Yes, they did, and I'll tell you for why. Because somebody was interested in the blue bits in the cheese. I'd like to throw in the word Stilton at this point. Okay, and legal. that person <laughs> had a cold. And so they had an opening. They had an area of the factory. Somebody could go in, or where they make cheese, with the cows. Cows, yes. <laughs> the cows provide the milk. They don't manufacture it. <laughs> So basically, what you're trying to convince us in this story is that you've yeah. written off to, to want to see Abba. I did. And he said, would you be interested in doing the cheese yeah. thing instead of the Abba thing? I don't know. And you've, and you've got back and said you don't want to do that. Oh, well, I politely declined. Well, you Claudia, would. you're oh. such a bad liar. What? I don't believe a word of it. So you, did, you didn't go. And you never met Abba. I never met Abba, and I didn't meet um, the cheese people. And you never got a Jim or Fix It bad. No. Uh, Lee, uh, a decision of some yes. sort. Tara, what do you think? I think um, Claudia's lying. And what are you basing that on? I just know Claudia. <laughs> no! I think it's accepted. I think, yes, that she probably wrote and wanted to see Abba, but they wouldn't offer you cheese. Yeah, exactly. No. That's the bit I'm doubting. It's the cheese bit. Should okay. we go for the lie, then? Yeah, I'll go for the lie. I think uh, Claudia might be lying. OK, Claudia. OK. Truth or lie? I will tell you. Okay. It is actually true. Ah, oh, you're so good. It's completely uh -huh. true. Yes, it's true. Claudia did ask Jim will fix it if she could meet Abba, but was instead offered the chance to see how the blue bits were made in cheese. So Jimmy is quite keen on seeing how blue mouldy bits develop. That's why he stayed with his mum so long after she died. <laughs> the uh, blue bit in cheese is in fact a living fungus that smells slightly off and serves no useful purpose, much like Sir Jimmy himself nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> Enough about uh, Jimmy Savile, or to give him his full title, Sir Jimmy Savile, the creepy old man who washes his pants in the showers. <laughs> uh, which Ooh. rude interruption means at the end of our final round, it's uh, David's team who have proved themselves to be ah, superior ah. human beings, having crushed Lee's team 9-8. So, night-long celebrations for David's team, the joy of having taken part for Lee's team. And we leave you with a reminder that according to a recent survey, the three most commonly told lies are the checks in the post, your hair looks just fine, and I was only trying to perform the Heimlich manoeuvre officer. <laughs> Good night. By day, Ben Affleck defends the innocent, at night he is daredevil. Seriously, Colin Farrell co-stars in 20 minutes here on BBC One After the News. Next. <laughs>